Frenzy formed in 1983, August 1983, so uh, we're pretty much 24 years old now. And uh, I was already with a band called The Sharks, uh, and there were some problems with The Sharks. We both had, uh, me and Alan Wilson both had big egos and stuff, and it was difficult to work as the band. Um, stay in the band anymore so I decided I wanted to do my own thing um, and before I even left the Sharks I had already formed Frenzy with Simon Brand who everybody knew later and for Torment um, and uh, that's what we decided to do and, uh, we didn't have a name for the band at the time and I recruited uh, the old drummer that was in my sort of punk band that I was in uh, school with and we recorded some demos and stuff for Nervous Records we sent them to them and they said yeah Let's carry on when the sharks left off. Let's do, let's do friends now. <laughs> We started touring in Europe. We used the same agencies as we used for Sharks and everything. And we were approached by a bigger, bigger record company in London called ID Records. You know, we'd already started playing some of the Clubfoot shows in London. You know, the famous Clubfoot shows. And the guys that ran the Clubfoot also run ID and ABC Records. And they asked us if we'd sign for them, so we did. And straight away, they asked us to record an album, so we recorded Clubfoot Tour, which of course has all the songs that everybody knows us for. The period that I see red. And the problem to itself, and that was a drug. The music was really big in the 80s, bigger than the national charts in some, in some ways. And it just meant that we could, it opened up the whole world for us. We'd already been touring Europe and, and Scandinavia and stuff, but. As soon as we did that, then we were doing Japan and everywhere else. Everywhere except America. <laughs> it was difficult to get in America back then. But um, uh, Well, I think um, the scene is the most healthy that it's ever been now because of all the uh, influence of heavy metal, punk, ska, oi, all that kind of music. It's not so elitist anymore. No. And it's, it's very fertile, isn't it? It is. You see lots of um, kids want to... When we went to America, the, the biggest shock was the kids want to pick up double basses more than they want to pick up a guitar. And in our country, it's all about guitars. <laughs>
dying before because it was all just about psychobilly. And uh, as people got older and got out of the scene or some of the new bands that came along were so horrible that they didn't like it, then it, it was just dying. But there's that much more influence from outside styles of music going into it, into the, when, when the band members are songwriting. It makes for much better music. Yeah. It seems to have gone more worldwide, which is much more, I mean, the massive Australian bands like Living End, and we've got a Zombie Ghost Train here, and the Japanese bands are coming to the European festivals now. This band, uh, Spike, were here last night. The worst time for Psychobilly with the way it sounded and stuff for me was the mid-90s. Turned into horrible gore billy. I don't like that. This was called Robot Riots! <laughs> Hey there Monster Channel, hope everyone that is cool, buy the new Frenzy album and keep watching because we're going to get big. <laughs> <laughs>